Morning guys. Uh, Rig welter 1698 here. This is one of the other, um, I won't say it was a passion, but something that I really enjoy doing actually. Um, worm breeding. Um, just for the sheer hell of it really. Um, fantastic creatures. Uh, if you go back through evolution and everything else, worms are the um, worms are the second oldest uh, species creature spe uh, group of um, species on on the planet. Uh, second only to jellyfish, and worms have a huge part in um, our ecosystem uh, biodiversity. Everything from breaking down um, organic materials to aerating soil. Um, I think there's a fact somewhere that um, there's some, somewhere in the region about 13 million worms um, per acre um, under general general soil. Um, now these worms aren't your common and garden earthworms these are primarily designed for composting um, which is composting of um for me it's my scrap vegetables i live on my own so i don't produce that many but um what i do is i normally collect all my scrap vegetables and boil them boil them up soften them up a bit um if I've got too many, I just uh, put them in a freezer bag, bang them in the freezer um, and take them out when I want to feed them uh, during the summer. Probably won't have as many uh, vegetable cuttings because uh, I pretty much eat all my all my salad stuff right the way through. So, I mean, there'll be the odd bits of salad, but, but there we go. Right, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll sh see how the worms are uh, this wonderful December. Uh, this wonderful December morning. What I normally do is I normally um, cover the worms um, just with a bit of paper towel. Keeps the light off them. They don't like light, um, and it also keeps it moist as well. So uh, I'll take off the I'll take off the, the paper towel and see and see how we're doing. <coughs> There we go. Oh, look at that little bit of a. Uh, that's what I don't like to see in my um in my waste. A little bit of plastic. I have to remove that. Worms don't do plastic. Um, do everything else. Uh, anything that grows, anything that's grown on the on in on land, they'll uh, they'll digest. I keep away from dairy products. I keep away from citrus fruits, peppers and meats now they'll digest uh, they'll digest them but they're they're not their favorites uh, the other thing they enjoy are coffee grounds hence my little um trip to greg's the other day to get some coffee grounds uh, to no avail uh, they thought i was a, a raving lunatic asking for coffee grounds for my worms but um i'll just show you how active they are at the moment I mean, we're talking about December now, so it's um, it's quite cold. You can see a few there, um, but they normally stay in the in the top sort of like four or five inches. Oh, there we go. You can see this is this is a sort of like food I give them. I just run that through through the blender, just chop it up a bit, gives them um, a little bit less work to do. Now that was a whole that was a whole slice of melon there. They've pretty much digested all the flesh off that. They'll struggle to eat the um, the skin, so I'll take that skin out um, and just uh, put it in the ordinary compost. Now the the yellow bits you can see are pieces of egg box. Again, they love egg box. Um, they'll break that down. Um, and there we go. So yeah. There are all the worms there. They're actually getting quite um, 
they're fattening up quite well now there's a nice mature worm there that's ready for breeding I'll uh, I'll do another video on the breeding uh, one day um, after the nine o'clock uh, threshold <laughs> watershed whatever it's called um, but yeah there's some that little middle section there that, that, that shows that this worm's uh, ready for breeding probably won't breed so much uh, this time of year but come the um, come the spring and the summer they'll um, they'll breed they'll be breeding there's another one of my uh, favorite additions the old egg shells um, I'll go for about a dozen eggs a week so uh, the boiled ones are, are fantastic because they're, they're that pretty much cooks the egg um, the eggshell as well uh, reducing any chance of salmonella and stuff like that um, there we go um, one thing I did find out is the tea bags now you think that tea bags would be nice and organic and they're not but they're not um, what tea bags do how tea bags are made um, they're encased in a plastic th film inside the tea bag um, to, to keep it all together um, so the worms will digest all the all the bag and the tea and the tea leaves and everything but they um you end up with a load of um little plastic bags in your in your thing so i'm stopping i'm stopping um doing the uh the tea bags and i'm just gonna concentrate with coffee grounds well there's a little bit through there but what i'm gonna do as it's christmas i'm gonna treat them to a little um christmas uh christmas dinner what i do is i feed them one side um so they'll they they'll all migrate over to this side of the bin and feed off the food and this area here should be um pretty void of worms but i'll swap it over every sort of like um four or five weeks um now any eggs that are laid um from the last time i was feeding in in that section of the bin that they'll they'll still be in the um they'll still be in the bin and that, that they'll take about 10 weeks to hatch maybe a little bit longer this time of the year but right time to give them some uh a special breakfast <sighs> and here we are it's um i'll run through what's in it it's basically uh porridge oats uh put in through the liquidizer um two parts porridge oats uh, two parts um, crushed Weetabix again just blitzed in the blender um, some corn flour I want to get some proper corn flour um, sort of like you know like polenta corn flour stuff you know the, the yellow stuff the maize flour that the Italians use I'll have to go to a, a bigger supermarket one of them continental supermarkets uh, up the uh, up the west road in Newcastle get some of that um, there's some oyster grit in there as well uh, flour yep flour porridge corn flour Weetabix um, and crushed um, crushed oyster shell uh, worms don't have teeth they have gizzards pretty much like chickens so they use the, the grit in here um, to uh, digest the food so I'm just going to give them a little sprinkling of uh, of the of this food just lightly over the top because um, you don't want it too heavy because it will just start clumping up um, and that will probably do them actually until um, give them a little bit more there that'll probably do them there until after Christmas and that's them done um, so they'll be quite happy there um, when I first set up the bin, um, I put the worms in too early and they struggled with the conditions. Um, it was probably too sterile in there for them and they all migrated out. Um, but luckily uh, I found them all. They were all, uh, they were all hidden somewhere under the, the garden. And what I've done now is uh, I've made a little uh, escape area for them. So if they, if they do crawl out, They'll, they'll automatically head for um, somewhere dark, uh, somewhere undercover, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. This is the other side of the worm bin.
just covered over with a couple of little pieces of uh, um, sheet there, a little bit of um, some cardboard there, and you can see how these are just uh, seeds that have sprouted. Uh, and I'll put them over that on that side because the, 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 those the, the, the worms will eat them as they digest them. Now you can sterilise this soil, um, the castings when you're done. But as you can see, this is pretty much. You know, there's the odd worm in here, but um, they're all they're all where the food is on the other side. What are you doing over there, mate? You can pop over there on them. So. I mean, they might come over for a rest. I don't know. I don't. I, I still haven't sussed out the uh, the thinking of a worm. There you go. Look at that. Now, can you see them? See them, folks. There. The little. I'll see if I can get some more. There you go. See where my finger is there. Little um, like green thing. That's a that's a worm cocoon. There's another one there. Right. Um, so this is what happened um, obviously when I was feeding here on this section the worms are breeding as well um, and as they're breeding they're, they're producing their little worm their little worm cocoons there's another one there and they'll um, they'll probably as I say oh there's loads it's absolutely loaded actually in here loads of uh, cocoons in there they'll um they'll s they'll s stay for about 10 weeks before they before they hatch out this isn't a good time of year really for hatching but what they'll do so what i'll do with this section here is i'll take all that out um sift it all out take all the worms out put them back into the into the, this main section here and all the cocoons in this section here what i'll do is i'll put them into a nursery box and they can they can they can stay there until they hatch. Each cocoon will produce three or four hatchlings, and given the right time of the year and the right, right amount of food, they'll repro they'll they'll be re reproducing within 12, 11 to twelve weeks. So I worked out roughly that one worm will reproduce. A hundredfold, roughly in a year. So uh, you, you're looking at a hundredfold per worm per 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 year. So um, you start off with a pound of worms. You could end up after a year having a hundred pound of worms, depending on depending on the the conditions. They'll only they'll only they'll only breed to the uh, available area that they've got so they won't overpopulate it so they just won't breed if the if the area is too big too small i mean what what this means is i can probably set up another bin now the same size as this uh, and run two bins then in the spring and the summer break those two bins down and run with four bins um and then i can start giving you lads who like your fishing um a good supply of worms and uh and that's it so that's my worm bin um i'll put the um i'll put their i'll put their little new new blankets back on there you, there you go boys and girls because they are boys and girls actually um worms are hermaphrodites and i'll talk about that in another video they um as I said, they the hermaphrodites, so they have both sexual organs, male and female. There we go. So that's them tucked up now. Um, as long as it doesn't get too cold, they'll, they'll, they'll be all right outside. If it gets really cold in the next few days, I'll just put them in the shed and they'll be fine. Um, right, I want to show you their their little escape area. There we go. And it's just down there. It's uh, just along the brick wall from where where they are, um, and it's just a load of soil just banked up there. Um, and any that come out will will migrate along here. There's a little bit of food in there, so 
Um, so every couple of days I have a check out of that, see if there's any good in. You get one or two and that's it. You know, if, if, if you get hundreds then obviously then you've got a problem with your bin. You need to sort that out before they migrate and you, you lose your whole lot. So there we go folks. I hope you found it interesting. Um, composting by worms, vermiculture they call it. Um, I love it. I love it. I really do. It's um, it's something that uh, I've uh, enjoyed doing for the last five or six years, um, and I'm fascinated by I'm fascinated by by what the little critters can do. So thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Uh, Rigwell was 1698. Not your usual bushcraft uh, video, but um, it's an outdoor video. It's uh, I think sometimes different aspects of uh of the outdoors all link up together you know you know people who like being outdoors gardening also like going out walking uh, and things like that so um there we go lads if you want any advice on how to set up a wormery in your in your um in your in your garden um not a compost bin compost bins are completely different compost bins work on heat to break back down bacteria and the worms in there can uh, can manage the heat. These worms don't, but they, they they'll go through one pound of worms here in this bin here. Will go through half a pound, half a pound in weight of food per day. So they're basically eating uh, half their body weight a day in food. So that's a good turnover, really. So there you go. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like and share. Like and share. That's the word. And I'll see you all. Uh, I'll see you all soon. I might even give them um, a nice Christmas dinner of a, a shredded sprouts, carrots, parsnips, turnip, bit of swede, um, and some cranberries. Maybe yeah, I might soak some carrot cranberries in some water and um, and mix them all up and give them a proper give them a proper Christmas dinner because I think they deserve it. Uh, they're spot on. Right, cheers lads. Look after yourselves. Be good. Be careful. Enjoy your Christmas. Have a fantastic Christmas. Um, all the lads that I've met this year, you've been unbelievable, boys. Uh, thanks for all the support. Uh, thanks for everything you've done. Thanks for looking after my, my back. Um, and next year is going to be a good year. Um, we'll, uh, there's going to be lots of things going on next year, hopefully. So cheers lads, thanks a lot now. Like and share and uh, I'll uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.